Hello students, in the previous lectures uh, we have uh, discussed uh, Lagrange's mean value theorem and its theoretical interpretation. Now in this lecture we will prove two coroll corollaries based on the Lagrange's mean value theorem and uh, apply Lagrange, Lagrange's mean value theorem to solve problems based on so let's let me let us prove first corollary based on the Lagrange's mean value theorem. <coughs> if a function f x is <coughs> continuous in a closed interval a b, this closed interval a b is always a subset of domain of function, right? And second is second condition is the function f x is differentiable in a open interval a b. And third condition is the derivative of the function fx is zero for all x belonging to the open interval a b then our aim is to prove that the function is a constant function fx is a constant function in the closed interval so for the proof of this theorem let us take two points two x1 two points x1 x2 x1 and x2 belonging to the closed interval a b with the condition that x1 is less than x2, they x1 is less than x2, and they look like they are not being close to it. <coughs> then fx satisfies all the conditions of the Lagrange's mean value theorem. Why? Why? Why the fx will satisfy the Lagrange's mean value theorem in this closed interval? Because the subset of the closed interval. So, if it's, if this function satisfies the both the condition of uh, Lagrange's mean value that is, f x is a well defined function in the uh, closed interval x one to x two, f x is continuous in the closed interval x one to x two, and f x is differentiable in the closed interval uh, x one to x two, then there is a point C belonging to the <coughs> open interval x one to x two such that f dash C is equal to f uh, f of two minus f of f of x2 minus f x1 upon x2 minus third condition let me write third condition we are given that f uh, differential of function uh, with this to x at uh, uh, is zero for all x belong to the interval so c point also belong to this interval therefore f dash c must be must be zero for for, for all c belong to the interval v which is such a law <coughs> this gives now if you substitute the value of f dash c for 0 x minus x minus x so now this is a positive number if you cross multiply it so we, we get, we'll get uh, f of x to minus x minus x minus x if you shift to the right hand side this, this implies f x to one f x two for all x1 x2 to the uh, closed interval a. Now in the here, first we have fixed the value of x1 x2, then we took the interval. Now we made it arbitrary. Arbitrary means it can take any value from uh, a to b, including a and b at once. So they're equal. So if the value function uh, uh, are equal at all points within the closed interval a b then the function must be a positive function so as it says it implies that the constant function for the legs uh, will be a closed interval the corner is second if fx and gx are two functions such that both the function are continuous in the closed interval a b both the function are differentiable in the open interval a b and uh, their derivatives are equal for all x belong to the open interval a <coughs> then our aim is to show that both the function differ by a constant only in the closed interval <coughs> so differ we are given here so we consider the function phi x phi x difference of these functions we can show gf method for so okay. Now, 
this uh, phi x is a <coughs> sum of two quantized function in the closing category. Therefore, phi x is quantized in the closing category. Phi x is a differential uh, is derivative in the closing category because it is sum of two derivative functions in the closing category. Now, third is if we differentiate, if we differentiate phi x, we got phi dash x, phi prime x is equal to f prime x minus f prime g. But we are given, our condition given is uh, f dash f is equal to g dash x for all x going to the equal So, substitute the value phi dash, phi dash x is equal to 0 for all x going to the quantity. So, now <coughs> first quarterly, if uh, first quarterly, if this phi x satisfies all three conditions of the this first quarterly implies phi x must be a first quarterly, phi x must be a constant function for all x going to the uh, close into the <coughs> if uh, this is a constant function means what is phi x phi x is equal to fx minus gx so f if phi x is constant means fx minus gx is a constant function for all x minus so if it, if it's equal constant this difference of two uh, functions is a constant function means the both functions are very constant for all x minus the uh, <coughs> so both of them are true now Let's uh, solve problem based on the lag uh, uh, itself. Find the value of C. Find the value of C of the lag ring theorem if f x is equal to <coughs> x plus minus one if x minus two for all x belonging to the closed interval R two zero to R. So. First, we have to check whether it says both the lemon middle theorem, then we can apply so we can, we can have a point C from the interval such that then it is equal to F B minus F A equal to F point. So F is this multiplied, we got a polynomial function, cubic polynomial in X. Fx is a cubic polynomial in X, which is continuous for all real numbers. So when its function is all real numbers. So, if it continues for all the numbers, so uh, uh, 0 to half is closed interval is a subset of uh, real number. So, f x is also continuous in the index in this closed interval. Now we differentiate the left. <coughs> we got cx square minus x Which is this function. What does it mean this function? So, the function again, no so, this function is defined f dash x derivative function fx is this function is defined for all, all real numbers therefore this is subset of this real number so this function exists in the equal to to half this implies uh, fx is differential in the equal so this means this is uh, therefore fx satisfies both the condition of Lagrange's minimal theorem both, both condition of the Lagrange's minimal theorem, then there must exist at least one point C belonging to the open interval zero half, so that f of dash c is equal to f for half minus f of zero upon half minus. Substitute the value. So the function the value at dash at c f two at f of two half f of zero upon two half minus. Now, after simplification, simplification, also we got a quality equation in C. So, we solved the quality equation in C and we got two points. So, it's quality in C, we got two points in C. So, now we'll check which one of the two, which one of these values, if, uh, if, if uh, both are in the interval C, so we got two points. If uh, we'll check whether which one is right, so we got after simplification, so we get to do decimals. And from this, we can guess that 1 to 4 lies in the interval. 1.6 is outside the interval. Therefore, 1 to, 1 to 4 will become the interval. <coughs> C is equal to 1 minus n to 6. So, we got a point C from to the ground to open interval half, uh, 0 to half. Therefore, effect the function is subtract. We got a point C from the interval. By using Lagrange's minimum theorem, prove that 
modulus of sin x minus sin of y is less than modulus of sin y for all x y by integer. Now, so to this question, so from here, you have to go and guess what, what f is. How much you apply? Let me do so. So consider the function f is equal to sin of sin of and x y is a sin of uh, a b a b two x y x y so you can consider x y two so x y two is here d uh, one x y this subset of a b two so if we have to do x to infinity y to infinity x to infinity we can do this interval we'll discuss this let me so by lagrangian we can find the function f t is equal to sin t T belongs to the closed interval. Now we know that uh, sine t is continuous for all the elements. Therefore, uh, this uh, this closed interval x to x to y is a subset of R. So this function is f of t is uh, continuous in this interval for all all the elements. If we differentiate uh, uh, f of t this to t, we got cos t cos t, which exists for all the elements. Therefore, f is tangible in the now f t satisfies both the condition for Lagrangian function in the uh, <coughs> closed interval x y. Therefore, there exists the there exists at least at least one real number c belongs to the open interval x y such that f c is equal to f y minus f x open y. Now, substitute value of function here f at c, function at c, function at ha, or y, function at x, or y minus x. And now, if they are equal, then modulus will also be modulus are also equal. If they are equal, modulus are equal. Now, we know that the modulus x is less than or equal to 1 for all x. So, if it is equal to 1 for all x, this will be 1 for uh, x for y belongs to the symbol. So that we are using taking the help of the upper model. Now this equal to this, this is less than width, therefore this is equal to modulus of uh, sin x minus sin y sin uh, x minus sin sin y minus sin x upon y minus x y minus x will be y minus x will be uh, less than one. Model of the quotient the quotient your model. So and cross multiplying it for sin of y minus sin x for all x minus 2 alright we solve it for x y dual interval now we get x y arbitrary we solve it for all x now next problem is verify Lagrange's mean value theorem for the following function f is equal to and root of x y minus 4 in the interval in the interval let's solve this problem first y is equal to fx and root of x to minus 4. Now we can go to the dimension. First of all, whether the function is defined in, this, in the interval or not. So for that, we, we have been find that the term is this. So this function is defined and root the term will be and root the term will be for greater than 0. Otherwise, it will become complex. Because we are dealing with the real world function. So this will be a real world function. So this will be a real number if x to minus 4 0. Subtracting cos on both sides, we got x is 0 and 4. Taking cos on both sides, we got x is 0 and 4. We got the mean equal to. Now this is, <coughs> this is undefined if mod x is less than 2. So uh, beyond that, for all members except that mod x is less than 2 will be 20. So the domain of x will be minus 2 rows, will be 2 to 2. Now this interval, given interval 2 to 4 is a subset of this. So this function is f x is well defined. Well defined this interval. Well defined in for 2 to infinity, there will be well defined. This is a this is, this is subset of. Now, fx is continuous. This is well defined. That is continuous. You don't have any point on which this is well defined. This is well defined. So, this is continuous. We differentiate fx. We got to x is equal to x upon the of x squared. Which exists for. All x to two to four. See this this does not exist at x to two. So two is excluded from this point. So this function, uh, the derivative function f x is well defined in the open interval. 
Now FSL condition is implied that it will show the control. FSL says both the condition of flag lengths in the middle. Now we are just at this one. See, we are going to see down to the control. The force are there. I press C equal to F4 minus 4 plus 4 minus 2. So to the other function, F for that C and F at 4, F for 2. So to the simplified. After simplification and the simplification, we got a quadratic in C. And from that, we get to we get the C is the plus minus. So the value which is 2.4. Plus 2.4. So plus 2.4. Plus 2.4. Plus 2.4. Plus 2.4. Plus 2.4. Lie in the interval. So at which it is going to be parallel to the or joining the end points. We got passing the position. Passing the point is abscess r and the point will be x is equal to 4, y is equal to 3. So we the four and this is the point at which abscess r will be parallel to the chord joining the point 2f2 and 4f4. Now let us apply Lagrange linear theorem to solve the second problem. Log fx is equal to log of x in the interval. Closing tool one two. So next problem is here we are given y is equal to fx equal to log of x and x long to one two. Uh, we can find the domain of this log of x. So the domain will be from uh, zero to infinity. Log is defined for positive numbers zero to infinity. So one two e is a subset of this. So this function is well defined in the the log of x is well defined in this. Uh, one <coughs> if one divided means it is constant to one to to differentiate fx we got one upon x one upon x is uh, uh, will not exist if x is zero but zero doesn't block this interval so this function is differentiable log of this well defined this interval therefore fx is log of x is differentiable in this interval uh, one two open to one two so f is differentiable for one to e. Now f satisfies both the condition of Lagrange's middle theorem in the uh, in the interval one to e. This is one to e. Uh, then this is the point at least one point c belonging to number c belonging to the open interval one to e such that f c is equal to f e minus one upon e minus one. So to the value function f c one upon x fx log of x, fp log of 1, upon e minus 1, more simply that, log of e is equal to 1, log of 1 to 0, c is equal to e minus 1. Now, the simplified and find value of c, <coughs> the value of c will be 1 minus c is equal to 2 minus 1 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 minus Apply Lagrange will return to the function to the function f x is equal to x is power uh, 2x. Again, this function, what the domain this is? The subset of real number. So, this is a function well defined. Therefore, well defined for real number, that's why it can be simple and maximum to this function. So, this implies that it's continuous. There's no point of uh, at which this is not defined means. The function limit exists at all points within this. So the continuous function. We differentiated it two by three x over one. So zero. This function is zero. At zero, the zero doesn't belong to this. So the function. This function is uh, exists in the simple minus two minus two to two open intervals. Therefore, the function is differentiable in the open interval minus two. Therefore, we are like this minus him. Zero. Oh no, no, sorry. Zero. This zero belongs to this. You know, this means f is not differentiable. If zero belongs to f, if you got, if you just find a point at which the function well defined in the interval, then that that condition violates. The condition violates means the f is not differentiable uh, in the open interval minus two two two. So if one of the two conditions violates means the uh, the, uh, the Language is will not be applicable in this interval for the given function, hence, not So, for 
the function x is equal to uh, x raised to power 2x. This form is this split function. So as f x is equal to 2x plus uh, 3, if x is less than 3, 15 minus 2x, if x is less than 3. So, you may function all real numbers. The output point is 3. And then 3, so 3 comes to 4. Uh, we have to apply like this in the interval minus 1 to 5. Uh, the set of real numbers, domain k is the set of real numbers. The output point is 3. So at 3, we'll discuss this quantity and differentiation. F is continuous, uh, F is a, is a polynomial function. It's continuous set, uh, continuous in the set of real numbers, therefore, continuous. Right? Now, continuous means at 3 will be well, will be equal to we will be equal to uh, less than three. This function polynomial, polynomial condition will follow will be x will be less than three, and the polynomial equal to two, and, and three will be equal to nine. Right? It is continuous for all x. The condition will be nine. <coughs> now, the output is point is three. So, our add three will add the differential will be like negative. At three. So, left derivative at three. Make the x is to three to negative. F x minus at three upon f minus three. So, it's a real function. So you know, take the function will be two plus the limit value. Now change the limit. Make the limit explicit. Put x equal to three minus h as if x is always greater than zero. As x plus two three from the negative, it will be two. Change the limit. X to zero. This is equal to x will be three minus h. Three minus h. Uh, so this will be equal to three minus h. Simplify it. Then that's all the constructor, and we got this equal to. Uh, limit is 0 of minus 2 is minus h. We are cancel this. Similarly, we will find the right limit at 3. Limit right limit at 3 is equal to limit at x, which is to 3 to positive fx minus at 3 upon f 3. Now, again, change the limit. Make the limit explicit. x is equal to 3 plus h. x is equal to 0. x is equal to 3 plus h. Change the limit. Make substitution. Simplify it. As a good dot. This will be minus. This will be minus. This will be minus. So left derivative of 3 is not equal to right derivative of 3. So f is not differentiable at 3 block this interval. You got one point, x one point. That's not differentiable. So is not difficult for the function fx in this interval. Thank you.